mystery. Mystery! It goes hand in hand with history. Because it rhymes, and I can think of no other reason, history is full of mystery. From the location of Cleopatra's tomb, to the identity of the person who gave up Anne Frank, to why Will Smith still has a career, it's all a mystery. There are some mysteries of history that will enrapture the imagination and go on to become legends in their own right. Like who the fuck was D.B. Cooper? The fuck does Stonehenge even do? And why even is Will Smith? I, I mean, seriously, is it just because he was big in the 90s and TV execs don't know how to market to millennials? Is that why we constantly have to endure this talentless, smug, grinning waste of cum prancing around every TV interview like he's just shit gold and is giving it away to the audience? Or is it because he's black? And when you're a fat arsed rich, white old TV exec who made his millions exploiting people of color, and when it's suddenly fashionable to have a lot of diversity in your TV shows, those same people you exploited who have now made it big are suddenly less willing to answer your calls. But Will Smith, he always picks up the phone. Anyway, history is a mystery. The future is also a mystery. And fuck it if I know what's going on in the present. I hope you guys are all doing all right. Yeah? What was I saying? Right, mystery, okay. When it comes to the Second World War, there are mysteries by the bucket load. And it's almost a tradition at this point that every YouTuber, SCP writer, and mainstream media blogger on a slow day will cover one. But just for you, because I know you guys love your Shermans, here's a mystery that gets almost no attention. Uh, I mean, there's a reason it gets no attention. I mean, it's hardly switch the lights off and listen to Chill's mystery. Number 15. Burger King Sherman Tank. The last thing you'd want in your Burger King burger is a 76mm armor-piercing composite rigid shell fired from a Second World War American tank. But that's just what you might get. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. But this is a legit mystery, and it has never been solved. Even today, there are numerous, numerous historians lying awake at night, clawing at their silk bedsheets, wondering what it all means. And perhaps you can help them. Perhaps you can solve this 30-year-old mystery. But what is the mystery, he says, angling into a perfect transition. The year is 1991. A young historian, naive and full of wonder, visiting an outdoor tank museum, notices something on a displayed Sherman. Curious as to what it is, he calls over one of the museum staff, but they don't know. In fact, they've never seen it before. The two ask several more senior members of staff, but no one knows what they're talking about. Soon they are joined by the museum curator, who pulls out his copy of the Sherman Tech Manual, but alas, it makes no mention of this mysterious object. Neither do any of the technical manuals. Heck, it's not even on the blueprints. They shrug it off as a mystery. Perhaps it was just a scrap of metal that once held some piece of improvised armor. What they've stumbled upon is no one-off. Not a random artifact left behind by the chaos of war. What they've stumbled upon is a mysterious object known only as the comb. But what is the comb? No one has any fucking idea. For the past 30 years, people have began to notice the small metallic object welded onto the casing of the final drive of the Sherman. It's long, thin, often made from a single sheet of steel with a series of rigid teeth edged into it. The comb. It has mainly appeared on Shermans, but also M10s, Chaffees, various armoured cars, Stuarts, and even more bizarrely, the Canadian-built Sexton. What's more interesting is that there appears to be no correlation between which Shermans have it and which don't. Each tank has come from a different factory, uh, used for different purposes, and was even in use by different nations. American Shermans, Canadian Shermans, British Shermans, even Shermans sent to Russia have occasionally been found with the comb. But to this date, the only technical reference ever found was a diagram showing how to prepare the Sherman for deep waiting, though no explanation was ever given for its purpose. So is it some kind of deep waiting implement, something to help cut through things like seaweed which may wrap around the tracks? We don't know, because in photos of deep waiting Shermans, even the ones used at D-Day, there's no evidence of the comb. And that wouldn't explain its use on sextons and chaffees, which were never altered for deep waiting. To make this mystery even more perplexing, when one was found on an M18 Hellcat, it was on the turret. 
To date, there are numerous theories of what this thing might be, from a wire cutter to prevent barbed wire tangling up in the drive wheels, to a tool for scraping the mud off the driver's boots, to a bottle opener. But as of yet, only three theories have ever truly held water. Theory 1 was that it was a latch for quickly releasing a towed trailer from inside the tank. Not a bad thought, few Shermans were converted into crocodiles, towing a large trailer of petroleum jelly around for use as flamethrower fuel. Now, th these trailers were somewhat questionable by design, so getting rid of one quickly when it was hit was a pretty good idea, and not having to get out of the tank to detach a trailer full of explosive that was on fire in the middle of a battlefield with people shooting at you was an even better idea. Four of these Sherman Crocs were built, with all four seeing action briefly at the end of the war. But the problem is, we have a photograph of these Shermans, and, uh, no comb. Alright, not a Croc, but maybe a post-war conversion for a similar idea. You see, Shermans are quite rare, and in spite of them being made by the literal fuckton, after the war most of them were scrapped but a few were converted into civil engineering machines, most commonly excavators, diggers, tractors, and mining vehicles. And all of those were bought back by history enthusiasts and reconverted into Shermans, so it could simply be a leftover addition made during these conversions. I mean, yes, but that doesn't explain why we keep finding these things on other tanks, you know, ones that were never converted into mining equipment. Theory 2. Aliens! Theory 3. That it's a shipping brake lock. It's basically a piece of string used to keep the parking brake held down, as during transport the constant rocking of a ship or the wriggling of a train carriage could in some circumstances knock the parking brake loose on a tank and cause it to move back and forth. Now this does make sense, the Sherman did indeed have a parking brake, and the string hooked around the comb allowed this brake to be operated from the outside. Now, this does seem to be the most plausible theory, as we have not one, but two pieces of evidence which support this theory. The first is an image from the US Army Signal Corps photograph collection, courtesy of the Library of Virginia, which shows the SS Calhoun. Calhoun? It shows a boat shipping Sherman tanks for the Tunisia campaign, with a large section of rope Virginia from the machine gun mantlet and down the lower hull, over something which would appear to be the comb. The second piece of evidence is a sketch found in the National Archives of Ottawa, I hope I'm saying that right, Canada. And this details a parking brake bracket affixed to a Canadian ram tank. According to what information we have available, these devices were supposed to be fitted to the Grizzly tank, that's a Canadian copy of the Sherman tank, with a few minor alterations, in preparation for shipping them overseas. However, no Grizzly tank was ever shipped overseas and the very few extremely rare examples of the Grizzly we have left do not have this device. If the device was actually a parking brake bracket used for shipping, then, then surely this device should be on every Sherman, not just a handful. In fact, we've got pictures of Shermans that were in Tunisia, and absolutely none of them appear to have this bracket fitted. To add more nuance to the mystery, a Sherman tank that was transported in a ship that was torpedoed and sank was recovered in 2015, and would you believe it? No comb. Even when diving to the wreckage of the Emperor Heritage, a ship that sank off the coast of Ireland with a number of Shermans on board, we do not see any with the added comb. And yet, if this device really was a parking brake bracket used for shipping, then shouldn't they all have them? Of course, it may have just rusted off, but if it had, then why is nothing else rusted off? For anyone who has dived this location, well, note these tanks are in extremely good condition. I mean, I wouldn't drive them into battle after a quick blast with a hairdryer, but you get the idea. Unfortunately, the parking brake bracket theory, though the most plausible, is sadly not correct, so the mystery has continued. Pressing even to this very day, historians left, right, and center, clawing at their bedsheets, screaming into the night, unable to sleep as the normie peasants of society continue on with their day-to-day -day lives, blissfully unaware that just beneath the surface lies the greatest mystery in history, still yet unsolved. What the fuck is this weird metal thing attached to the front of the Sherman? What? is the comb. We may never know. Anyway, big thank you to same as Discord, whoever the fuck you are, who had this momentary lapse in judgment and decided to buy me 75 coffees. I only have four mugs, I'm going as fast as I can, all right? Jesus Christ, what do you want me to do, drown? So for you, Mr. Same as Discord, this one is your fault. In dreams.
dreams he came <laughs> That voice which calls to me And speaks my name And do I dream again For now I find Your fear Jim of the upper rising 